Good morning, everybody. So my name is Agnes Sissa. With my colleague, Malcolm Korda, we would like to take a presentation about the most important invasive alien species and the relating uh, practical experience about uh, the control. Okay. And before we do this, I would like to take a short introduction about invasive literature in Hungary. Uh, mention only the most important books published in, uh, in this topic. So the first important book called Özen Növények. This is a Hungarian book. It's mean invasive alien plants. But it's very important because the authors of the book uh, create a list of Hungarian neophytes, uh, potential transformer invasive species, and they uh, summarize the uh, what are the most important adaptive strategies that make a, a species invasive. And uh, in this book, you uh, will find the most important uh, invasive species, uh, their taxonomy, morphology, importance in nature conservation, in forestry, life cycle, biotic interactions. And the second part of this book, uh, you will see here, as a Növények too. And in this book, you will find the other most important invasive species. And uh, the most chapter were translated to English, and it was published uh, as the most important invasive plants in Hungary. And we were lucky to publish an other book, which is also in Hungarian. This is the invasive uh, alien plants in, in Hungary. Um, I can show you this book uh, in the coffee book if you're interested in. So it contains more than 60 uh, invasive taxa with pictures, with distribution maps. Maybe that's why it could be interesting for, for other people. And the content is uh, very similar to the first mention, so there is the taxonomy, morphology, life cycle, biotic interaction, nature conservation, importance, and a little bit about the controls. And this book is also done, is uh, done out of a, from a website. So if you write, write this title, or, or I can help you, you, you can download this in PDF. Important book is the practical experience in invasive alien plant control because there is a rising uh, demand to to know the practical experience, the practical control methods. So how can we control these plants? And the uh, Dunaipur National Park director published this book in, in last year. Um, I would be happy if if I can. Uh, a book for everyone, but unfortunately I, I can't. But uh, you can download this, this book in PDF or, or buy uh, at the registration. So this uh, book contains uh, lots of case studies, a few uh, chapters about uh, general um, information, how can we monitor this species, for example, the general methods, uh, how can we plan the control methods? And after that, there are lots of case studies. Uh, this book has more than 50 authors. They, uh, they write the case studies. And uh, in the studies, you will find the uh, exact methods. How can we control this species? And at the end of the book, we try to summarize the most important information uh, concerning every plant. So maybe the letter are very, very, very small, but I, I try to, to show you. So there are chemical and non-chemical methods relating every plant, and uh, the, you will find the exact information. For example, what kind of herbicide is useful and effective, or what is the concentration, <coughs> what is the best timing, of using this method, for example, uh, how many treatments do you need to be, be successful, the control, and even the other comments which can affect the success of uh, control, for example, the weather condition, the soil conditions, 
and uh, there are lots of different control methods even which are not so effective but it would be also useful for for uh, not repeat this or or take another way so i would like to show the most important invasive species with a short introduction, although I know we, we know all these uh, species, so maybe we have the, the same enemies, the same invasive plants. The one of the most important is the tree of heaven, Islandus altissima. It was cultivated in Hungary. It is good for wood and paper production, and uh, the wood is not very, has not a very high quality. It is good only in inside use. And this is an ornamental uh, and the tree and the has a very good nectar source tree. So why uh, spread they so continuously? Um, they can spread generally and vegetatively as well. So it has a very special wing summaries which can fly in the uh, windless air. Uh, the root sucker in the ability, I think this is the most important characteristic which um, uh, inhibit the control methods. So there are lots of uh, shoots coming from, from the root. It has also a drought tolerance with uh, storage roots and has a very rapid growth. So it is a tall tree. That's why comes the name the tree of heaven, the tree of sky. The scientific name means Ailantus is the tree of sky. This is a, an Asian uh, species. It's very important in Chinese mythology. The Chinese people said even the dragon like relaxing in the canopy because it's so tall. But uh, this is a very good strategy to spread the, the seeds. It has a very strong allopathic effect as well. They are experiments using as a herbicide. And it is also important, there is no um, important enemy disease or fungi which control here in, in Europe. So you can see in this map the Hungarian occurrence, the tree of heaven. You will see only the presence or, or absence of the species, not the density. Uh, it caused natural conservation problems, especially in dry grasslands, maybe in dry oak forests, but it te uh, tend to occur even in wet areas, mulch areas. There is an increasing significance in forestry as, as a weed and in the agriculture as, as well. And you will find in, in anthrop anthropogenic habitats uh, as well, causing problems in pavements and buildings. And you, you will see oh. <coughs> the, you won't see <laughs> the lots of root suckers. Because it's not the right. Yes, a lot of root suckers. Okay. So uh the most important, the <coughs> control methods we can use. So according to the case studies, there is, uh, there is no <coughs> any mechanical control metho methods which could be useful against this species. There are only chemical treatments. You can spray the seedlings and the new shots, the root suckers. There are lots of different herbicides which are useful but the most of uh, them are glyphosate-based herbicides. Uh, you need uh, one, two, <coughs> or three treatments. Usually it, uh, two or, or three treatments is necess are necessary, and it is most effective in, in the sunny weather, in warm sunny weather. So here you can see the uh, successful uh, spot, spot of, of uh, Tree of Heaven stands. The other um, method is, chemical method is, the <laughs> wiping herbicides, applying herbicides with a, a brush, a radiator brush, for example. There are also good uh, using glyphosate with herbicides and um, the time of treatment is, is before, before of weather conditions. 
another good effective method uh, are the partial bar stripping uh, and the bar treatment without cuts. Uh, the first one is uh, you, you can apply no trunk size and you can enjoy the trunk with a knife or machete and after that use the herbicide and this is, uh, has a high selectivity and environmentally friendly and it's usually effective and you don't uh, need to repeat this, this first method. And it is also good to use some uh, color so you can mark the, the controlled uh, examples. And so you, you can control was it successful or not. The other thing is the other control method is the uh, bark treatment without cut. Uh, this is uh, effective according when you have only very young uh, seedlings, when the bark is very thin and it helps the herbicide uptake. And uh, the method is quite uh, similar, so it is one or uh, three times you can use uh, glyphosate this herbicide. So if you have bigger trees with, with a bigger trunk diameter, the trunk injection is much more effective. So you can use a drill and make drill holes. Uh, the exact uh, recipes are in this book. So it's better one uh, drill hole in every five centimeter of girth. And to this come to the herbicide. When, uh, it's a different, uh, the volume is different of the herbicide and it is also important to close the hole uh, so you can inhibit the evaporation of herbicides. So from injection you can use uh, different equipments, for example uh, syringe or uh, water bottle as well and to close the hole is, uh, it could be also silicone or other glue but it is also important it is a very selective and environmentally friendly way. And the cut stem treatment, this is, uh, this is the cut the trunk and uh, after that uh, you should apply herbicides, for example glyphosate based herbicide and it is also can very selective and, and effective. So the second stage is a, a, a bit similar to the first mention uh, relating the spreading strategies. This is the black locust, Robinia pseudoacacia. It, this is the, one of the most important tree in Hungary, in Hungarian forestry because of wood production and honey production. And it was used uh, for erosion shelter and recultivation as well. The seeds uh, has a persistent seed bank so they can lay in the soil and keep the uh, seed viability, longevity before decades, more, more than 40 years, they, they can uh, maintain the viability. The problem is with these species, as invasive species, that they also can create suckers, root suckers, and spread by, by shoots and uh, suckers. It has also uh, drought and cell intolerant the competitive ability is also important and the allopathic effect as well. So here you can see the, the map. So black locust you can find everywhere, even the lake of Balaton. It, it was only a joke uh, because the, the, the small cells, ha uh, the edge of the small cells are located in, in the beach of the Lake Balaton, so it looks nice <laughs> if there were everywhere this black locust. It caused natural conservation problems, especially in dry grasslands, oak forests, domestic <laughs> forests sometimes. It is increasing significance in forestation as, as a weed as well. So here you can find a useful non-chemical treatment, the grazing. The for example, sheep and cattle can able the young shoots. And uh, this, is, uh, this is not a, a short story because it uh, is important to take <laughs> it continuously at uh, two or three years, so regularly. 
chemical treatment, the spot spraying could be also useful. Uh, some seedlings and, and new shoots can you spray with, for example, glyphosate-based uh, herbicide or other herbi herbicide. It's a wide spray. It is uh, the lantrel in forestries. And it is uh, useful in, uh, in warm, sunny weather. It's better to use this uh, spraying methods. The other methods are, are a bit similar than, than the first mentioned. So there are also partial bark stripping and using herbicides. This is, could be also selective and you don't need a repeat, so it, it's, it's quite effective and practical. The drug injection, this is also similar than according to uh, the other species. Uh, you can take a, a drink hole, use a herbicide, sometimes fertilizer. It uh, makes it much more successful. And uh, this is a bit time consuming, but very selective. You can use in, in protected areas uh, as well, if you have permission, of, of course. And uh, this, this is the best way to, to take the drill hole in, in root color but it's, it's uh, quite time consuming. It's better because the transport of uh, <coughs> herbicides is better, but it's very time con consuming this way, and that's why usually is it applied in, in chest height and, uh, and rear the trunk. And you need uh, two people, one using the drill, uh, and the other coming with the water bottle and, and sewage, and it is also has uh, other difficulty. You need batteries for the drill machine. So it uh, has a very high uh, labor, but very selective and could be useful. Pest, uh, some treatment is also could be useful. It's not so selective and uh, maybe it's uh, less time consuming, further trunk and using uh, herbicides. The other most important invasive species is the black cherry, Prunus serotina. It is also spreading in Hungary. It was uh, spread in different plantation in the second canopy layer, for example, pine forest, black locust forest, poplar forest. Uh, the role was it that uh, they can have the, the growth of the main tree species, for example, oaks or poplar and they can enrich the, the soil, or this was the, the thought uh, before they were planted. And uh, spreading is very effective via seeds because uh, birds like the, the fruit, this, this fruit, and, and they can spread for long distances. They don't keep a, a seed bank, but they keep a seedling bank. So there are lots of seedling under the closed canopy and if they uh, come to light, the canopy will be open, they, they uh, will be grow further. It also has a wide soil and water tolerance and uh, quite rapid grow, allelopathy. And uh, they don't, uh, they can't uh, create root suckers, only trunk shoots. So invaded habitat, especially the sandy areas, are invaded. You can find uh, dry or mesic forests, and sometimes uh, in wet areas for gallery forests, flat plains as well. And you will see the uh, control methods. The first is the non-chemical methods. If you have only small seedlings, you, you can pull out uh, with hands. It's a manual re remover. It's quite selective and environmental. This is a, a bit other method, which is interesting. This is the girdling. It's also a non-chemical method. So people use uh, a chain saw uh, or machete and take, uh, take uh, injuries on the trunk. So here you can see it. it's better to use two chains and to make two rings. And uh, it could be very effective, but if the weather is very good for the black cherry, uh, 
sometimes occur shoots from the trunk, so the lower part of the tr uh, trunk could survive. Mm -hmm. Maybe this, this part can survive, and, and you should repeat this. The spraying could be also effective. There are a bit difference because this species has leathery leaves, so it's better to use some surfactants uh, mixed to the herbicide, and that will have the effectivity. You can also use the bark, partial bark stripping. If you have smaller trees uh, uh, above uh, five centimeter trunk diameter, uh, the most herbicide which was used was only glyphosate-based herbicides, and one or two treatments could, could be effective. Uh, and this is, uh, has, has uh, a high selectivity. Bark treatment without cut uh, stripping could be also successful, but uh, it is also important to apply all around the gut. I haven't got very good photos uh, about this control, that's why you, you can see the black cherry before the control, uncontrolled spreading here. Injection. This is uh, the first mentioned um, control. You can weigh the, the same way. So one drill hole per five centimeter of, of girth. And cut uh, some treatment, so fed the trunk and <coughs> apply herbicide. This is, could be also successful. It is important that uh, you should uh, apply the herbicide or surface of the cut and uh, you should do it immediately after the, the cut, after the fell of the trunk. So we, uh, we have three species which uh, has a bit similar occurrence <coughs> and similar spreading strategies and similar controls, and that's why we will see together these three species. This is the box cedar, Arcernagundo, Green Ashwaxinus persinvanic and common herbary, the Certis occidentalis. These uh, plants were widely <coughs> planted in, in Hungary, enriched the soil, have the main tree, and uh, this was planted in understory and second canopy <coughs> layer, layer in different forest plantation, for example, poplar and oak or pine forest uh, all over the Hungary. These species also have a uh, high seed production. They have good uh, seed dispersal by wind, by water, and uh, this common hackberry fruit is spread by birds. The birds like very much this, uh, this fruit. They uh, can't create root suckers, but they can create uh, trunk shoots, trunk sprouts, so that's why uh, this, is a strat uh, this is an adaptive strategy which makes difficult to control. Here you can see the distribution maps of, of the species. So as you see, especially the flatlands are infected by this species. Box the green ash occurs mainly along the rivers, streams, in gallery forests. Uh, hardwood forest or, or softwood, poplar willow forest and as well. Common huckberry occurs uh, especially in sandy areas, in flatlands, but they, they can occur in, in gallery forest in, in moist areas uh, as well. The control methods are, are very similar, connecting these uh, three species, so you can remove, pull out the small seedlings by hands. It could be effective. Felling and sprout removal, sprout control. So if you fed the tree and don't use any herbicide, it's usually not effective. So unfortunately, you should uh, control the, the new coming shoots from the trunk. The chemical treatment, the spring, uh, as you can see here, by boxada could be also effective. It's uh, especially good in, in uh, warm sunny weather. So the 
other control methods, the partial bath stripping and bath treatment without injury, the trunk could be also effective uh, among these three species. If you uh, apply twice these herbicides, it's better to, to use in, uh, in August and October, and sometimes you can read it in the next uh, year. The trunk injection, here you can see the way of trunk injection with drill. It's better to, to take a drill hole uh, transversal, so handing transversal the, the drill uh, <coughs> two or four uh, centimeter deep into the trunk. The <laughs> better to do it a bit transversal to so reach uh, the most vessels in, in the plant body. So the uptake, herbicide uptake is better. The cut uh, stem treatment could be also effective. Uh, here you can see the book said uh, sometimes occur new shoots uh, and you, you uh, should repeat this. We have lots of, uh, lots of uh, invasive species. Uh, I would like to mention only two shrubs from these which are maybe the most important. The first one is the false indigo. Uh, <coughs> it was also cultivated in Hungary because of erosion shelter, the soil enrichment, and it also has a persistent seed bank and very good regenerative strategy, uh, rapid growth maybe, and, and allopathic effect. You will find it uh, especially across the water streams, water courses, rivers, in, in gallery forests, uh, sometimes a bit drier habitat as well. And this is uh, good news, but there are non-chemical methods which are successful. Uh, one of them, the manual removal in autumn and winter. So in some areas in Hungary, uh, Local people in habitats uh, can collect this species for firewood. And, and this is uh, could uh, have the, the control. The grazing uh, could be also effective, as, uh, especially by gray cattle, but it is uh, also need a regular re grazing and sometimes uh, moving at the end of grazing. And, uh, it took two or three years, and after this, uh, this uh, stance could turn to a grassland. Uh, another mechanical treatment is the flame moving, followed by, by grazing. Uh, it is uh, effective if the black, uh, not black locust, for indigo stands are very dense and very tall and the animals can't eat it. That's why the first step is moving this uh, very hard shoots and after the young shoots uh, can be eaten by animals. So this is the second step by uh, goat, donkey, horse. There are lots of different case studies so all these uh, animals can, can eat the horse indigo. So the grazing is uh, three or five times per year so they can do it continuously, and after a five or four years, it turns to a grassland, maybe, or a wet meadow, so it could be also effective. Other methods is the habitat reconstructions. For example, after the grazing or moving, it can uh, use an, uh, some native tree species and afforest it. This area, it is usually the poplar, poplar willow forest, Maybe this is the first step. Uh, yes, and there were another uh, failed case when it was a channel, and this channel was eliminated, and after that was the afforestation, and it was also effective. And also, these uh, shoots can be used for energy and uh, maybe for other pur purpose in, in uh, horticulture. Other shrub species, or almost three species, is the Russian olive. Uh, 
it was also planted in Hungary, the soil, because of soil enrichment, erosion shelter, recultivation, they can spread uh, by seed, very good, has a very good regenerative capacity. Uh, fortunately, they don't create root suckers, only trunk, uh, trunk suckers. It also has a very wide temperature tolerance and water, soil water tolerance. Invaded habitats are very different. They can be uh, dry, saline, sandy habitats, and sometimes it's wet habitats with uh, more moisture. And there is a very good non-chemical method to remove this uh, shrub. This is the uprooting with a special loader on tractor, which has a special lifting fork, as you can see here. So if the uh, weather condition, the soil condition are, are good or suitable, you, you can use it, um, except of nesting period of, of birds, because uh, some bird species like very much this shrub. Felling and sprout removal could be also effective, but it usually without uh, using chemical, it's, it's not uh, very effective. The spraying, so new shoots can, can spray by glyphosate herbicides and mm -hmm. using fertilizer, and uh, this has a bit uh, higher water sensitivity, so the rift risk is, uh, is higher. So the windy, uh, according to windy weather, it's not very good method. So you can use this partial bar stripping uh, as well, using glyphosate herbicides. It has a very high selectivity, and uh, usually you don't need any repeating of this treatment. The trunk injection, so this uh, species can reach a very uh, big uh, trunk diameter, you can use trunk injection I in this case uh, as the above mentioned uh, way. And uh, sometimes this shrub is very dense and uh, people can't access the trunk to inject. And in this case, uh, grazing help access the trunk. And after the grazing, people can inject the trunk. Cut stem treatment could be also effective it has a bit uh, uh, higher drift risk, maybe tender injection. So we have this common milkweed, which are the, the top first invasive alien herbaceous uh, species, Asclepia syriaca. It was uh, widespread cultivated in Hungary for very different purpose. So people thought uh, it will be good for silk production from the uh, seed hair. They try to make silk. It was using as paper, for example, wallpaper was made from this. So people try to uh, do syrup and wine from, from the flowers and eat the shoots as the asparagus, although there is a bit toxic. Uh, but <laughs> so after a while, uh, uh, after a while, people, we realized that they won't be good, but only the good, uh, uh, good thing, the honey, it's not very good, but uh, for honey production, you, uh, some people use it for honey production, and they disperse the seed, unfortunately. So this uh, species has a persistent <coughs> seed bank, with seeds which uh, spread for long distances, they lay in the soil, and the other very good uh, adaptive strategies are the root system. They are, have very extensive root system, and from this roots, they are coming the new shoots uh, continuously, and that's why it's very difficult to combat against this species. These also have allopathic effect and, and quite rapid growth. Here you can see the map of uh, the occurrence in common milkweed. It occurs especially in flatlands, in the sandy areas, dry, sandy grasslands, but uh, you can find it even in gallery forests and willow poplar forests or along the rivers as well. Uh, it will be uh, 
more and more important in agriculture as an agricultural lead. Non-chemical treatments, we, we couldn't find any good non-chemical treatments. There are lots of case studies uh, which were carried on uh, several years uh, long, but was in, were ineffective. So if you try to moving or, or grazing, uh, you will become more and more new shoots. It may be good for or inhibit the flowering, but not good for eradicate this, this plant. So unfortunately, according to our, uh, our knowledge, uh, it's necessary to use chemicals even in protected areas. So we uh, have only one experience when the grazing was effective, but it was because <coughs> maybe the ve uh, very good weather conditions, so we don't know why was it exactly. Um, but uh, the chemical uh, controls are, are the effective. So the spot spraying, you can see here, if you have only sporadic plants, for example, in a grassland, you can use this spraying method. It's usually uh, should uh, taken twice. Uh, so one treatment is not uh, effective usually. It's better to apply before the flowering, of course, to inhibit the, the flower keeping. And uh, there are different options, different uh, opinions. Uh, some people said it's better to use in warm, sunny weather, but other people said it's much more in, in cooler weather because it inhibit the evaporation of, of this herbicide. <coughs> 